Okay, and we're back for week six. Aren't you excited? I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay, now I've got my book. Do you have your book? We have passed everything that I've given in the PDF file. We're now into chapter three, unit three, and there's no PDF for you, so I sure hope you've got your book. If you don't have your book, pull it out. I want to get started and go down this track and then oh I don't have my book and I can't well, go ahead and get your book so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening right now not related to my class or connected to my class but we kind of need to look at the bigger picture now not just in my class you probably are aware by now that there has been some news in the Daegu area newspapers about local universities and their choices. How they're going to handle the rest of the semester. So right now is Sunday night, okay? I don't know exactly what's happening. Uh, they haven't told us everything yet. Last week, they did a survey of professors, a survey, someone, uh, to find out what we wanted to do with classes. But of course, professors can talk, but we don't decide. It's not a democracy. Uh, finally, the university administration decides what's safest for society, what's safest for the university, and we just all do the best we can. So right now the noise is that maybe, probably, probably, we're going to be online all semester. <clears throat> no face-to-face -face classes. This is what the future looks like for us right now. All online classes this semester. Maybe, probably. Ah, oh, not my choice. All right. As I mentioned in the Zoom last week, the university asked us to delay midterms. So I've delayed it one week to May 11 to 15. And that's probably good because, you know, May 5th is a uh, holiday, as I remember. And the week before that has holidays. It's kind of yucky. So... Our midterm test will be the week May 11 through 15. In EPA 1, we have two midterm tests. One you could call a paper test. It is a listen and write kind of test. Maybe I ask you a question and you write your answer. Maybe you listen and check the box. All right. I'm not going to tell you much about it yet. We still have some things to arrange. Still two weeks to come, and we don't know exactly what's happening. If we do our listen and write test online, I have to change a few things. So we're still working on that. I don't know all the answers yet. We're working on it. We're trying to figure it out. Please be patient. Everybody is stressed. We do the best we can. The other part of the test is a one-to-one, man-to-man, person-to-person interview test. Now, as I said, we will talk about how to score these tests. We will do that in Zoom this week. Remember, last week we didn't have a Zoom class. Last week we had two recordings. So we will discuss in our Zoom class how we will count points because the original design was 30 points for the midterm. Uh, we can reduce that to 20 points, but then we have to make up the points somewhere else to total 100 points, right? So that's a choice. And then how many points for the paper test and how many points for the interview test 
So I'm going to show you really quickly through a type here the choices we have. I'll just put this right here. Choice 1, choice A, I don't know, we'll name it in the zoom, is all points on paper. No interview points. But please notice, anyway, everyone must take the interview. Option two would be something like 50-50. 50% points paper and 50% points interview. Choice three could be something like maybe 67-33 paper. 67% interview 33% uh, we're not going to make the paper test zero points we will decide as a class as a class and so each student doesn't get to make their own choice we'll decide as a class now I have two classes a day class and a night class and I will allow the two different classes to make different choices. So if the day class wants all paper and no interview points, and the night class wants 50-50, we'll do it that way. Okay, so that's issue number one for us. Issue number one, I colon issue number one. Percentages and issue number two will be whether or not we decrease the points from thirty percent. Or something less on the midterm. If we do that, increase where? So we'll need to take a look at the syllabus and see how the points are supposed to be allocated. So that's one of the things we're going to have to do on our Zoom class. I'm going to make a save a file there. Ah, you can see one of my study areas is Gender. Gender means do I think like a boy? Do I think like a girl? I'm doing a study on that. Classes. Not me, but people. Um, APA 1. Midterm. Choices. 2020. All right. So we can close that now. Another thing to notice is that there is a holiday on May 1st. That's a Friday. And there is a holiday. You can't see it here very well. There's a holiday on May 1st. And there's a holiday on April 30th. Now, my night class is the 29th, and they would have a class, but that means my day class on the 1st does not have a class. And just like last week, I don't want to have to juggle these two classes. It's not worth it. So this week of April 28th, Actually, it should be April 27, huh? April 27 is a Monday. Excuse me. This week of April 27 through May 1, we will not do a Zoom. April 27 to May 1, we will have two recorded lectures. All right. Just so you 
now. And that means the week after that, well, May 5 is also a holiday, right? It's pretty ugly. We're going to figure out how to do this so that it works best for everyone. My day class would be off, I guess, May 5. I can't remember now. How does that work? Let's take a look. I've got the calendar here. And it says May 1 is a holiday and May 5 is a holiday. And April 30th is a holiday. So what we might do, I'm still thinking on it, what we might do is do a live class one day and not the other, but my EPA 1 class is a Tuesday, Friday class, so this is really ugly for us. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. We still have two weeks to think about it. Alright? Don't worry about it just yet. What we... But we know that May 4 kind of sucks because it's a Monday and the 5th is a Tuesday so uh, we'll figure something out because otherwise EPA 1 is going to be quite far behind alright That's our upcoming matters. You can see from before. That was our notice from last week. All right, close that. Let's take a look at the eboard. Now, as always, in the calendar that shows on the eboard everything's a little bit different because I'm recording I'm uploading stuff on Friday Saturday Sunday but our actual week of class oh come on there we go our actual week of class starts April 20th there's nothing showing here because I uploaded to the eboard during the previous week and the video will go up there but it will be looking a little bit funny because I'm going to upload the video on Sunday night and the week starts on Monday. So we can't do anything about that. Don't worry about that. Let's just go back and take a look at what we can look at. So the first thing to notice is the midterms timetable. Click on that. And it says click on this link to access the midterms timetable. Now, you need to choose your time for your interview. Okay, for your interview. All blocks are 15 minutes. Do not erase other people's registrations. If somebody chooses a time, you do not change it. There's a log. I can see who is adding things and who is deleting things. If you delete somebody else's time, you will have a problem. Do not do it. Even if they ask you to, do not do it. Details on the examination will be, will be provided through our lectures, through our Zoom. We'll talk about it. I'm not providing test information in this recording. Please note you cannot write in the gray areas. Those are my break times. So if we click on that link, it takes us to a Google Doc. In this Google Doc, you can write your times. We can see that four students have already done that. And one student has, interestingly, kind of made things weird. How did they do that? I don't know. Control C, Control V. That's fixed. And I think that's fixed now. 
All right, so we can see that some students have already signed up. The instruction is write your name in a white block. The black blocks are locked. You can't go in there. Why? Because those are my breaks. Lunch break. This could be a class test time. It's not confirmed yet. That would be my EPA one day class on Tuesday, but it's not confirmed yet. That would be my EPA one night class test time, but it's not confirmed yet. And that's my dinner time. All right, now your, your interview test will only take about seven minutes. It's 15 minutes because my other class needs 15 minutes. And because if we have to, we may have to do a paper test one by one in that 15 minute time. I'm still working on it. It's not yet confirmed. Just know that there is a paper test. All right. It's basically a listening test. But it's not confirmed yet. So right now I have blocked out the two regular class meeting times. Also, I want to tell you, I suggest you not, 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 I suggest you not do an interview test before the paper test. The paper test will help you understand more about the interview test. Don't do the interview test first. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't start before 11 because... I don't work very well in the early, early mornings. Students who have a Zoom at 10.30 know that it's not my best time. And who knows what could be happening, what could be changing. So for now, let's not. I see people have been making marks on my document. Kind of weird. Anyway, those are the midterms. There's nothing else in the notice board for this week, but uh, kind of a pain I have to move it. If we look at the assignments, you see the listening logs in the notebook check. Well, I don't look very good. Not very many people are finished yet. It's 9.14 p.m. on Sunday night. And these listening logs and notebooks uh, copies are due by 11.59 p.m. tonight. There's not very many there. What also I have is something new on the Haksap Jario, and it's related to tonight's lesson. We will come to it, but not yet. We don't need this here. Let's just shrink it. Alright, so, in fact, last class in our uh, first recorded class, we did the listening on page 13. The second recording from last week was the young public servant for a day reading. Please understand that I do include young public servant for a day in my testing. Consider it your book. Again, think about the vocabulary we talked about. Metropolitan and things like that. And think about... I just realized something, sorry. Uh, and think about the bigger ideas, what are they trying to do. So we have what we call, sometimes call micro level, micro, like microscope, very small, and macro level, which means very big, like sometimes people learn to write macros in their software. Micro level means looking very small, would be vocabulary, or maybe a grammar rule in a reading. And macro level would be, what is this story about? What's the message? Why did they write it? What are they trying to do? What do they hope people will do? So micro level and macro level from young public servant for a day. 
All right. So we did page 13. So we're now on page 14. Office routines. And if we look on the blue column on page 14, we find our objectives, our goals, our targets for this reading, for this week. And it says to talk about weekly work schedules, weekly, every week, work schedules. To ask about frequency of work activities. Frequency means how often? Very often, not often. And third is to write an email about your manager's daily routines. Now, we're not going to write an email. If we look on page 13, there is a short reading. Oops. There's a short discussion. And there's a timeline. And what I want to say is this timeline is very, very simple. And it's not good enough for me. The timeline has 0% meaning it never happens, right? Now, English is not very scientific, but there's an idea that never means never, never, never is zero, or it could be one time in 10,000, it never happens, right? It feels like never. And on the opposite side of that continuum, that long line from 0 to 100, is always. It always happens. And that might be 100% or it might be, you know, 999,999 times out of a million. There's one time it didn't happen. It feels like always. So we've got never. I need to get closer to the camera here so you can see. We've got never, and we've got always. Never, never, never. Always, always, always. And next to never, uh, not quite never, but almost, is almost always. Almost always. But we can change that from almost always to hardly ever. And instead of always, we can say uh, almost, almost, almost always. Almost always. Now in Korea, we often hear people saying, oh, I almost do blah, blah, blah. I almost eat breakfast every day. I almost eat breakfast? It means uh, the breakfast is coming to my mouth and it fell down and I didn't eat it? No, I almost always. Not almost. I almost always. Almost means actually fail. Actually didn't happen. So always, uh, it didn't happen to always. I failed always. It's almost always. Now, the reason I, uh, well, not the reason. This chart in this book has only one, two, three, four, five, six words in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, actually, seven, because they say almost always and usually. And I just think it's very, very incomplete and actually kind of wrong. So I have put together a different chart for you. Let's click on it. Frequency adverbs. And I have a PDF for you, which you should definitely, definitely save, print out, put in your notebooks. Uh, you can look at your notebook in the test. I will be listening to hear you use more language, more professional language, better language, not just simple high school language. So, frequency adverbs. Adverbs are words that modify, that change verbs or change adjectives or change nouns are very, very flexible. Frequency adverbs we, are things we think about with usually and typically. Now, typically is my word. I often use it when I am giving a test. I often use it. I typically use it. I usually use it. Typical means the ordinary, the most common, what I do the most. Okay? So typically, usually, most often. 
unlike many languages, in English we don't have a lot of precise, perfect rules. We don't describe exactly percentages for this and for that. But what I've got here is a good general guide. So in the book, we could see never and always being opposites, and then hardly ever and almost always next to that. I can't make a good chart sideways that way. I could turn this so you could see it that way, but then we couldn't read it. So just think of it this way. As always is 100% or almost 100%. Never is 0% or almost, almost 0%. Never can also be not ever. Look at it. That's where the word came from. N from not and ever. Not ever is never. Then we have almost always. Not always, but really close. And we have almost never or hardly ever, they mean the same thing. Okay, there's there's no difference. Now we come to something closer to the middle where people argue a lot more. Less than almost always, probably will say the word is usually. More often than not. Much more than 50%. More like kind of eighty percent or something. We don't we don't we don't have a number, but less than almost always. We also have the word frequently, and then frequently is kind of far over there because frequently first it probably used less, but also it's more flexible. It can kind of go up to almost always and kind of go down to often. It's not really clear exactly how it fits. And less than often would be sometimes. And sometimes in the book looks like 50%, but that's not really a good explanation. Sometimes means I don't really have a good number, but it's not a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's not a little, 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 little. Sometimes it's in my mind. So my mind and your mind could be different. I sometimes go to the store, or I sometimes go to the barber. In my mind, it means not a lot and not a little. But if you count how many times I go, you might say, ah, you go a lot. So a lot or a little. Sometimes it's kind of this fuzzy middle. All right, so back to our opposites. Always, never, almost always hardly ever usually rarely and this one's hard to say rarely you like your steak rare means not very much cooked right rarely or the same thing we can say is seldom I rarely go to the sauna I don't care for it I rarely go or I could say, I seldom go to the sauna. I seldom go. Here's a note. A lot of native speakers of English are sloppy with their grammar, and they might say, I seldomly go. But technically, that's wrong. That's poor grammar. We're not supposed to say seldomly. It's rarely or seldom. I seldom go to the jimjiban. I seldom go to the sauna. I seldom go to the mogyoktan. I shower at home. I sometimes take a bath at home. So, usually, rarely, or seldom. And then, often. Often means more than not, right? But probably less than usually. So, kind of the opposite of often is occasionally. On occasion. Not too much, but not rarely. So, one guy might say, I occasionally go to the sauna, maybe uh, twice a month. And somebody else might say, wow, you often go to the sauna. I never go to the sauna. I only go one time in a year. These numbers are not perfect. It's in your mind. Always, almost always, usually, often, sometimes, occasionally, rarely or seldom, hardly ever, or almost never, and never. There are a few other words that are floating around out there. 
so you may hear something else. Now here's how it works. We can say, how often do you usually wash your hair? Which is really kind of double talk. How often do you wash your hair? How often do you usually wash your hair? It's perfectly fine. How often do you wash your hair? And the answer could be, I usually wash my hair twice per week, or I usually wash my hair two times each week. I usually wash my hair two times per week. They're all possible answers. Where do you usually go to drink milk? Where do you usually go to drink beer? I don't drink milk outside. I usually go to the Masterhof to drink beer. Okay. Where do you usually? Well, this is our pronunciation exercise. Do you usually? Where do you usually go to drink beer? I usually go to Masterhof to drink beer. That was supposed to be Meisterhof somehow. A more general question, a broader question, could be something like, tell me about your typical Sunday afternoon. Tell me about your usual Sunday. Tell me about your typical Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoons I usually watch a movie, but sometimes I take a nap. And occasionally I go to a pro sports event. Some of Lions, uh, Daegu FC, does they have a basketball team? I don't know. <laughs> don't follow KBO. KBO, KBO. Korea baseball, Korea basketball. So I don't follow. Uh, I watch Lotte Giants sometimes. That's all. Sometimes we need to say the word it instead of usually. That means we're guessing it's not too, too usual. It's just a simple often. How often does it snow in Daegu? Or how often does it snow in Daegu in March? How often does it snow in Daegu in winter? And the answer could be, well, sorry. It almost never snows in Daegu in March. It often, I, oh, it often snows in Daegu in January. Or it sometimes snows in Daegu in January. It occasionally snows in Daegu in February. It rarely snows in Daegu in December. It almost never snows in Daegu in March. Or whatever answer you give. Now, you know, I don't live in Daegu, I live in Miryang, and it doesn't snow as often in Miryang as it does in Daegu. But the last few years we've found snow on campus every year, but I'm not sure when. Okay, my last note is, be careful with the third person, S, with it. I go, you go, he, she, it goes. So, how often does it snow? Here's the S, how often does it, is third person, he, she, it. How often does it snow in Daegu? It almost never snows. It snows. Third person, S, first verb in the sentence, catches the S. You studied that in middle school and high school. Don't forget it. I'll be listening for it on the test. It's not a grammar test, but I expect you to be able to do the language you've been taught before and the language we're studying in our class. So, I suggest you print this out, save it, study it, fold it in a little paper, put it in your pocket, and look at it from time to time so that you can Give me lots of adverbs. If you just give me the simple stuff from middle school on our test, I'll be disappointed, and you can have a B. Maybe. But if you are challenging yourself and doing the things that we do in class, there's no minus points on my test. Okay. If you're trying something and you don't succeed, there's no minus points. You get points by doing more challenging things well. So the more good things you do well, the more points you get. No minus points. We start from zero and we go up. Many other professors start from 100 and minus, 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 minus. Okay. And that's one way to do. But in my mind, in an interview test, we start at 100 and go up. 
we start we start at zero and go up based on you impressed me. On a paper test, it's easy to say minus minus minus. They missed four, and that's uh, two points per question. That's minus eight. They got a ninety-two. That's easy for a paper test. For a speaking test, impress me. Show me that you're doing the hard stuff. And if you miss it, there's no minus point. And if you do it well, you get the points. All right. So we're done with frequency adverbs here. Uh, and that is the end of the Haksokjaryo for this week. So we're into the book, and we're on page 14, and we can see that we have a reading, and this reading is basically just a listening assignment. I'm not going to test you on the information in this listening, but it's a very simple listening. So all you have to do is listen and circle the word you hear. For example, A has always and usually. Which one do you hear? That's all you gotta do. We are on. This is listening 18. You might notice I'm wearing an earphone on one ear. That's to help you because before when I use the open mic system I had to listen on the speaker, you got a little bit of an echo. So now I'm using the earphone so you won't get an echo. Unit 3, Office Routines, page 14. Business Talk, Getting Started, Exercise 1. Harry Kramer is the CEO of Baxter International. This is his daily schedule. Listen, circle the words you hear. When I'm in our head office, my schedule is usually the same. I often go to the office early, but I hardly ever stay in the office after 6 p.m. I usually go home and have dinner with my family. I always do something with my children after dinner. At about 9 p.m., I usually go jogging. After that, I almost always listen to my voicemail and read email. Okay. Challenging? If you have the book, I think it's not challenging because the words definitely sound different. So let's walk through it. When I'm in our head office, my schedule is usually the same. Head office, main office, Koreans tend to say main office, English we more often say head office, bonguan. I often go to the office early, but I hardly ever stay in the office after 6 p.m. I usually go home and have dinner with my family. I always do something with my children after dinner. Wow, good daddy. At about 9 p.m., I usually go jogging. After that, I almost always listen to my voicemail and read email. Wow, do you think he's in Korea? No way. Because in Korea, very few people go home early. 6 p.m. is official office hours for many companies in the U.S. They start work at 8.30 or 9, and they finish at 5, 5.30 or 6. But I would say most companies, most common is 9 to 6. But many executives do work late. Many executives do work late, and of course in Korea, lots of workers work late. But he often goes early, right? Usually. No, I often go to the office early. So how early is early? Well, if the office opens at 9, maybe he goes at 8.15 or 8.30 or 7.30 or I don't know. I'm saying. I usually go home and have dinner with my family. That sounds really nice. Now... I guess there are probably some professors at Gameyang who can go home early and have dinner with their family. But in the public administration department, we have a night college. So most professors have 
two nights or three nights where they need to teach because we have a night program and almost every professor teaches a night class that's two nights and we have a graduate school program at uh, Susung Guchong, and that's Wednesday night, so that could very easily be a third night. So not very often do public administration professors get home for a six o'clock dinner. On the other hand, some people like me are a little lazy. Uh, we have a night class, so we don't like an early morning class. Some of the students have 9 a.m. classes. Some of the professors have 9 a.m. classes, but not me, please. I have one 10.30 a.m. class, and that is my EPA 3 class, not you guys. And that's already as early as I want. I try very hard to not teach 9 a.m., and I don't think I've had 9 a.m. class in public administration for nine years. But I did have a graduate school class at 9 on Saturday last year, and that was terrible. Saturday, 9 a.m. Oh, my gosh. All right. So that was pretty easy. Part 2 on page 13 says, what is your daily schedule? Complete the sentences below. Use some of the words below. We're not going to do that together. But I want to give you a new assignment. The new assignment will go up on the Haksap Chario after this. And that is write eight sentences. You can use morning, afternoon, evening. You can use the words in the book. You can use the words I gave you on the on the uh, in the PDF file on the Haksap Chario. Hardly ever, occasionally, rarely, sometimes, usually, frequently. So I'm asking you about your typical days, your common days, your usual days, your average days. And this is, the, this is the kind of question I will ask you on your midterm test. And if you have done the homework, it'll be easy. Right? Now on your midterm test, I might say, tell me about your typical Tuesday. You can say anything you want. You can lie, okay? I don't mind. It's an English test. It's a speaking test. If I want to know a public administration question like uh, what is the meaning of metropolitan, then there's one answer. But if I'm asking you a question about your thinking or your style, you can lie. If you have a name card, follow your name card. Right? If I ask you a question about your future, I hope it goes with your name card. But other things, you can lie. So that's page 14. Page 15 is a simple dialogue. We'll do that in our Zoom session. Page 16 is starting with something that I call TOEIC listening practice picture section. You know the TOEIC test in the listening comprehension section, the first 10 questions are pictures. Now, there's a way to do this better. Okay, When you're looking at tests, there are certain hacks, there are certain shortcuts that can improve your odds. doesn't guarantee you the right answer, but improves your odds of getting the right answer. So let's talk about the TOEIC listening comprehension questions 1 through 10 hack. The hack is to use the picture. That's pretty easy. That's not a hack. No, it's better than that. The, the hack is to use the picture before they talk about the picture. I'm going to make this picture here bigger so you can see what I'm looking at. On page 16, top of the page, you can see a guy. Okay? What's he doing? Top of the page. Oops. Closer? Alright. He's playing golf. Alright. Tell me more. What's happening in this picture? He's playing golf. 
Anything else happening? Maybe I don't see anything happening. Okay, tell me about the guy. Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, uh, certainly it's a boy. Oh. How's he dressed? Uh, khaki pants and a blue long sleeve shirt. So is it hot summer? Uh, probably not, because we often golf in a golfing shirt, polo shirt, which is short sleeve. Well, you can't see my sleeve. Often a short sleeve. So he's wearing long sleeve, so it's probably a little bit cool. Might be early morning, or might be autumn. Right? He's wearing light color pants, which is kind of a spring, summer, early autumn style. So it's not snowing. The trees are green. So when we have the photograph section in the TOEIC listening, what we want to do is to take three seconds. One, two, three. Three seconds before they start talking to look at the picture. So they'll say blah 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 toy toy. They'll say Now look at picture number one. A the man is playing baseball. B the boy is playing golf. C It's a hot day for golf. Alright. We looked at the picture during the first three seconds when they went. Now look at picture number one. That's three seconds. Now look at picture number one. A. That will be the start of the fourth second. So we have three seconds with nothing useful happening. That's when we turn our brain and look at this picture and say, what do I see, what do I see? A uh, uh, man playing golf, uh, light hair, uh, long sleeve purple shirt, gray pants, uh, beige pants, and uh, the tree's green. That's all I got. I can do that in my mind in three seconds. I can't say it in three seconds, but my mind can do that. So then when I'm listening, I'm listening to, to say, yeah, fit my picture. But many people do it backwards. They have one, two, three seconds, and they're doing nothing. And then it says, A, the man is playing baseball. Going, oh, is it baseball? Is it baseball? And they're already behind. And they now they don't hear question two. Uh, statement two, uh, the boy is playing golf. So could he be a boy? Well, in my picture, I would say, well, if he is uh, 17 years old, a high school boy playing golf, it's very possible in America. It could be a boy. So I'm always trying to take the first three seconds to examine the picture. What do I see? What could it be? What is it not? So when I hear the boy is playing base or the man is playing baseball, it's not baseball. A is out. B, the boy is playing golf. Well, it doesn't look like a boy, but playing golf is good. Maybe B. A is impossible. Maybe B. And then C, it's a hot sunny day for golf. If it was a hot day, he wouldn't be wearing a long sleeve. So B is probably the best answer. Maybe they think this guy is a 17-year-old boy. right? Sometimes the answer is not exactly what we think it is. We have to choose the best answer. All right. So that's what I call my TOEIC picture preview. Preview, looking before, looking in advance. So for the recording, it says, who is speaking number the pictures so we have a b c d e we have five pictures we have four recordings one two three four so your job is to write a number for each recording and this is my audio number 22. page 16 business connections listening Tell me about your job. Exercise one. Listen. Who is speaking? Number the pictures one to four. There is one extra picture. Number one. Tell me about your job. What's your busiest day? Oh, I'd say in the middle of the week, probably on Thursday. On Thursdays, we always plan new sales strategies. 
I get to the office at 8 and have meetings with my staff almost all day, from around 10 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. 10 to 5? You mean 7 hours? Of okay. Audio 1. A, B, C, D, E. Catch it? Number two. Do you ever have flexible working hours? Yes. On Tuesdays, I usually have different working hours. I have to call overseas to Asia at night. So on Tuesdays, I come to work at 11 and go home at 8. I like it. In fact, I wish I could always work 11 to 8. Number three. What's your most interesting day? Friday. It's a long day. I start at 9 and I usually get home late around 10 o'clock, but I don't mind. You see, on Friday, I usually meet new customers and do something enjoyable. We often entertain customers or foreign visitors at restaurants Friday evening. So working from 9 a.m. until 10 at night on Friday is really okay with me. Okay, something to notice here. These pictures are not showing a conversation. It doesn't have the two or three people in a conversation. That's a different kind of test. These pictures are representing what the speaker is talking about. Okay, So don't let yourself be fooled by saying, uh, uh, I don't see a, a man and a woman talking. It's con the picture represents the story. Number four. Number four. What about your longest day? On Wednesday, I often work overtime until around nine o'clock. I have to get ready for meetings the next day. I come in early at about 8.30, so it's usually a 12-hour workday for me on Wednesdays. All right. So let's take a look at the pictures and the, the, the numbers. Number one is record. Uh, recording number one is picture D. Now we'll listen to these again and we'll talk about it in more detail. But what we can see in picture D is some kind of staff meeting. And there's some charts in the background. This is you know, traditional chart. This is before PowerPoint took over everything. But still, you go to a lot of business meetings, there's no PowerPoint. All right. One is D. Two. Two is difficult because there's two photographs that are very similar. What we can see when we look in picture C is that it is night, that there are a lot of lights in the background from another building or other buildings with the lights on, and she's on the computer. Now that's a challenge, and we'll get to the next, uh, in just a minute we'll explain more. Just a moment, we will explain more. Audio 3 is picture B. Why? Because he's talking about having dinner, business dinners, business meals together. Picture 4 is E. Uh, I should say, recording 4 is picture E. Now, this is confusing because this is a woman at a computer. And picture C is a woman at a computer. And in picture E, if we look behind the blinds that are behind her, if we try to look out the window, it's dark. So the reason we'll make a difference is because in audio recording 2, she talks about making telephone calls to Asia. And in picture C, she's on the phone. In audio recording 4, she talks about preparing for meetings. In picture E, she's not on the phone. So that's the difference. Now we're going to listen again. And the second time, we... And by the way, you notice the golf guy was not a recording. This time we're listening, 
please circle the day of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And by the way, that's how we usually do it. M is Monday, T is Tuesday. Sometimes T U. Sometimes T U is Tuesday, but sometimes just T. And then W is Wednesday. TH is Thursday. And very rarely, but sometimes you'll see somebody make an R for Thursday. And R basically is from Thursday. T H U R is Thursday. See how my mouth is working? Because R is that way in English. We go kind of roundy and our tongue curls up. Thursday. And then Friday is an F. And Saturday, Sunday, if we have to write them, it's S-A for Saturday and S-U for Sunday. All right, let's listen again. Circle the day and write the time they go into work and the time that they go out from work. Ready? Who is speaking? Number the pictures one to four. There is one extra picture. Number one. Tell me about your job. What's your busiest day? Oh, I'd say in the middle of the week, probably on Thursday. On Thursdays, we always plan new sales strategies. I get to the office at 8 and have meetings with my staff almost all day, from around 10 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. 10 to 5? You mean 7 hours? Number two. Okay, so did you get that? Picture number, uh, picture D, recording number one, the busiest day is Thursday. He goes in about eight, he comes out about five, but it's meetings all day, so he's busy. Didn't say long day, he said busy day. Do you ever have flexible working hours? Yes. On Tuesdays, I usually have different working hours. I have to call overseas to Asia at night. So on Tuesdays, I come to work at 11 and go home at eight. I like it. In fact, I wish I could always work 11 to 8. Okay, so Tuesday goes in at 11 and comes out at 8. Number 3. What's your most interesting day? Friday. It's a long day. I start at 9 and I usually get home late around 10 o'clock, but I don't mind. You see, on Friday, I usually meet new customers and do something enjoyable. We often entertain customers or foreign visitors at restaurants Friday evening. So, working from 9 a.m. until 10 at night on Friday is really okay with me. Right, so Friday in at 9 out at 10. Long day. And finally. Number four. What about your longest day? On Wednesday, I often work overtime until around 9 o'clock. I have to get ready for meetings the next day. I come in early at about 8.30, so it's usually a 12-hour workday for me on Wednesdays. All right. So, for her, it's Wednesday. Picture E, recording number four, is her longest day. And she comes in about 8.30 and goes out at 9. She says it's about a 12-hour day. Well, of course, that looks like a 12 and a half hour day. Okay, culture note. If you notice that uh, most of these people talk about working something like a 9-hour day as a typical. Uh, recording 1, picture D, was 8 to 5. Well, 9 to 5 is 8 hours, but then we usually take a 1-hour lunch. Right? Some companies only take a half-hour lunch. Some companies take a one-hour lunch. Some companies work eight hours and a 30-minute lunch. They actually only work seven and a half hours. That's not so common, but it happens. Uh, more companies are stuck on that nine-hour with a one-hour lunch, like nine to six. You may have heard uh, some years ago a popular song was Working Nine to Five. 9 until 5, 9 to 5, which is an 8 hour day, but they got a 30 minute lunch, so they only work 7 and a half hours. Alright, that's page 16. Turn your book, turn your page. You'll see page 17. Now, page 17 is partner work. So we're going to save that to the 
zoom but I want to point out that this is a very very easy thing to test if you look at my book you'll see I have stars so even though it's a zoom activity and you think oh we'll do it in zoom you can start working on it before okay and this partner works so one person's going to be on a different page but think about your own life turn the page page 18 is our reading now before we do that I want to point to page 19 and it's got a bunch of clocks on it I often test time on the midterms so we will spend time on that probably not in the zoom class probably next recording possibly today if we finish this reading really fast but I don't think so all right so page 18 is a very typical kind of reading for a TOEIC reading comprehension TOEIC RC it's probably a little bit long for a TOEIC test but the content the idea is very typical in a TOEIC test and there is a key point about TOEIC reading comprehension which is forget about your outside knowledge just use the information they give you on the test if you use your outside knowledge it could be different from the test the test might have bad information or might have old information you know better but use the information from the test because the answer uh, the official correct answer on the test is what comes from the reading so don't use your outside knowledge read the article working and eating around the world okay a little culture note the work week in Argentina is Monday through Friday but executives in Argentina have very long days sometimes business meetings start at 8 p.m. so dinner in Argentina usually starts after 10 p.m. this is a cultural thing Central and South America usually have dinner later actually France and and South Europe also often eat dinner much later in Argentina business people finish work very late but executives in the United States often start work very early the usual business hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. but many companies have power breakfast meetings early in the morning at 6 or 7 a.m. these breakfast meetings are popular because managers can meet new clients and customers before the start of the usual business day in South Korea the usual business hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 1 on Saturday we know that's not right anymore right managers often have business dinners after work sometimes just in local coffee shop but they rarely have power breakfast okay we know this is not right 20 years ago many companies worked a half day every Saturday or a full day every other Saturday but that was 20 25 years ago when I first came to Korea doesn't happen anymore so what we know is different from the reading we have to base our answers on the reading not on what we know okay complete the chart Argentina business meeting time dinner time United States business hours time power breakfast time South Korea work week Monday Friday time Saturday time I'm not going to test you on those details the focus here is on the idea that some countries are early and some countries are late now I have information for you about how we describe meals can I shrink this down a little bit and I will put it on the Haksapjario after this class
after this recording. But in essence, we're talking about things like power breakfast or a light breakfast. A light breakfast means not heavy. Okay? A heavy breakfast would be bacon and eggs and sausage, and pancakes, waffles. Yeah, waffles is breakfast food. In Korea, it's a snack. But in the U.S. and Europe, it's a breakfast food. Uh, that would be a heavy breakfast. A light breakfast would be a banana and a cup of coffee, uh, a yogurt, something like that. So light and heavy has to do with how many calories, how much fat, does it make you feel sleepy after you eat it. And we can talk about power breakfast, meaning it's for business, or a casual breakfast, not business, just relax. Power breakfast, cow, uh, casual breakfast. Talk about power lunch, sounds a little weird, but it's possible. Power dinner, we don't say. Don't worry about it. So, we got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Power breakfast. Power tie. I'm a businessman. I'm wearing my business tie. It should be really bright and flashy. Korea is famous for flashy ties. This is a tie from Korea. It's quite flashy. By the way, I think, I'm not quite sure, I think I have worn a different tie for every recording and every Zoom. But I'm not quite sure. And I mentioned in one of my classes that I have 40, 40, 40 ties in my cabinet. But sometimes I confuse which ones I've worn and which ones I haven't. And I'm not, I don't care that much. But today I'm wearing a very dark shirt with a very bright tie. So we might call this a power tie because it really stands out. And uh, Korea has been famous the past 15 years for really bright ties. Many politicians are wearing those really bright, shiny, like a neon tie. All right, so that is our reading. Uh, again, don't worry about memorizing Argentina. It's just the idea that different countries have different times of eating. And I'll put uh, a little bit about meals. We have power breakfast, and a light breakfast. You can have supper. A late supper means it's late in the evening. Or early supper. In fact, I've got the file in another class. And let me just grab it and show you. Um, where did I put it? I thought I had it. Well, I don't see it here. Hmm. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Well, I will find it and I will give it to you when we get to that. The last thing is page 19. And page 19 is about time. Don't worry about the reading. The email is probably on the top. We're talking about time. So here we go. All right. All right. This is in my other class and I will give it to you. When we talk about time, we have a number of ways of saying things. We can talk about the minutes before the hour. We can talk about the minutes after the hour. And we have a couple other systems. So this chart will explain when I walk you through it. So we call this prepositions of time. Preposition is a word that gives a relationship. When I studied French in high school, and I said, oh, what's a preposition? The French teachers talk about preposition. My friend said, it's the box. I said, the box? It's the box. What do you mean the box? She said, you know, in the box, on the box, next to the box, around the box, below the box, above the box. So relationship to a thing. Well, those are prepositions of location, and prepositions of place. But for clock, it's the same idea. If you think about that round clock with the hands, then something that's a little bit, or would be a little bit be before or after the time. I guess for you, see, it'd be, that would be before the time and after the time. So they're prepositions. Prepositions of time using a clock. So in this chart, the left column is what I call the 
increment. The increment means the counting or the measure or the way to like that. Okay. And then the middle is the preposition, it's the relationship word. And then the end is the hour, the big number on the clock that we're looking at. So if you look at a digital clock, it's pretty easy. You just read the numbers, right? It is at this moment in time in my computer, it is uh, 10.07 p.m. Sunday night. And that's how we would do it, 10.07, right? But that's not what I want you to do. I want you to tell me clock according to the traditional analog clock, not the modern digital clock. And that's what's on the page here. Now it's happening that a lot of young children today are never learning how to read the old style clock. Maybe that's okay. Maybe that's not so bad. But it makes it hard to think about these prepositions of time when you only use a digital clock. But when you use an old analog clock, it's much easier. Let me show you. Let's imagine the clock is a pie. And that is one-fourth of the pie, or one-fourth of the clock. Now we know this is 15 minutes. But in fact, this is one-fourth of an hour. And in the same way, we can have one-fourth of an hour here. Now, if we go this way, now we have one half of an hour, right? 60 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Quarter, quarter, half. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. When we tell time this way, we always start with the increment, then we have the preposition, then we have the hour. So we could say a quarter till 11. Or we could say quarter till 11. A is in parentheses. It's an option you can do or not. Okay? Quarter till 11. Quarter until 11. Till is short and more informal, more casual. A quarter to 11. A quarter before 11, a quarter of 11, 20 till, 20 until, 22, 20 before, 20 of, 20 minutes till, 20 minutes until, okay? All these are the same. Now this right column goes all the way, top to bottom. That means these counts, these numbers are good for the whole chart. But we have a line here at 29 minutes. Because we only say till until to before and of for the time from 1 minute to 29 minutes before that hour. Okay, we don't say 35 minutes before 11. We just don't. So that's where we have a chart. So under this line is past and after. And we use the numbers for after. So it could be quarter past 11, right? Quarter past 11. Or half past 11. Or 10 past 11. Or 10 minutes past 11. 30 minutes past 11. 45 minutes past 11. So, when we have this clock, whoops, when we have this clock, we can count time all the way around to, it could say, 59 minutes past or after. All right? 59 minutes past or after. Now, there is a red bra brackets here because some people in Europe say quarter 11. 
And that confuses me because we don't say that in U.S. and Canada. Uh, but it's possible. The word minutes is always optional. That's why it's in parentheses. The, the uh, A before quarter is always optional. You can use it or not. When we use the word o'clock, we only use that for whole hours. So 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock. We don't talk about minutes if we use o'clock. There's no increments. There's no before. There's no after. There's no minutes. We don't say 7 o'clock quarter. It's just don't. If the minutes follow the hour, we don't use preposition. We don't use minutes. That's the digital time. 7.20. Also notice that AM and PM can be capital or small. If it's small, it uses the period, the dot, A dot, M dot, or capital AM. We don't use AM or PM in the middle, only at the end. So it can be 12.15. It cannot be 12 past 15. It cannot be 12 and 15 minutes. Right? It can be 12.45. It can be 12.45 PM. It cannot be 12 PM 45. So those are the examples. Finally, don't use 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. because it's confusing. Just say noon or midnight. I always have students trying to tell me, oh, it's 12 a.m. I don't know what that is. All right? Even the U.S. government has changed its rule, and just people don't know. Just don't say 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. Just forget it. Just say 12 noon or noon or 12 midnight or midnight. Okay. We're at 75 minutes. We will do the clock exercise. Mm, maybe later. But for the moment, I just wanted to introduce these words for you because I'm hoping that you'll use them in your practice and I definitely want you to be ready to use them on your test. I think I've covered everything. I will put these prepositions of time on your uh, web board. I will put the uh, meals descriptions, power breakfast, light breakfast, etc. on your e-board so that you can look at them in your freedom, free time. Uh, be sure to check them, think about them, study them, be ready to do them. That's it for today. I'll see you on Zoom later this week. Thank you.